Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Luis. I'm a third year medical student from the Ateneo School of Medicine and Public Health. And in this video, I'll be talking about the cost of a medical education here in the Philippines and the different scholarships you can avail of to help fund your education. As I alluded to in my previous video about applying to med school here in the Philippines, studying medicine here is not that cheap. Although it's not as expensive as studying abroad where tuition can be as high as tens of thousands of dollars per semester, with the average household income here in the Philippines being around 313,000 pesos a year, and the tuition of the top medical schools here in the country costing around 60 to over 200,000 pesos a semester, you can see why it can be very unaffordable for a lot of average households here in the Philippines to send their children to medical school. However, thanks to the efforts of both the public and private sector, the opportunity to study medicine is now made more available to people who couldn't necessarily afford it on their own. I've divided this video into four portions, the first portion being the cost of the different top medical schools here in the country, the second portion, the different government scholarships and private institutions offering scholarships for multiple institutions, the third portion, being the scholarships offered by individual med schools to its students, and the fourth portion being some general tips given to me by some of my friends who are scholars themselves. So feel free to skip around to the portions that interest you the most. Based on the result of the September 2019 Physician Licensure Exam, the cost of education in the top medical schools in the Philippines are as follows. Tied at number one are the Atenea School of Medicine and Public Health, Cebu Institute of Medicine, and Pamantasan ng Lungsod ng Maynila. For ASMPH, the estimated tuition per semester is 160,000 per sem, CIM being around 75,000 per sem, and PLM being 59,000 per semester. At number 2 is the University of Santo Tomas Faculty of Medicine and Surgery at around 125 to 230,000 per sem depending on which year level you're in. At number 3, you have the University of East Ramon Magsaysay Medical Center and the UP College of Medicine, TIDE, with UERM being around 170,000 per semester and the UP College of Medicine being around 6,000 per semester, mainly because all its students are subsidized by the government as a result of being admitted there. At number 4, you have the Far Eastern University, Nicanor Reyes Medical Foundation, which is around 170,000 per semester. At number 5, you have St. Louis University, which costs around 40,000 to 60,000 per semester. At number 6, you have Davao Medical School Foundation, which is around 56 to 60,000 per semester. At number 7, you have the De La Salle Medical and Health Sciences Institute, which is around 130 to 260,000 pesos per semester. And last but not the least, the Cebu Doctors University College of Medicine, which is around 70,000 pesos per semester. So as I said earlier, in relation to the average household income here in the Philippines, the cost of tuition among the top medical schools here in the country can be pretty unaffordable for most people. And because of this, institutions, both private and public, offer scholarships and financial aid for its students. One of the best scholarships you can receive as a medical student here in the Philippines is the DOH scholarship because not only does it cover your tuition, lab fees, and different miscellaneous fees from your school, but it also gives you allowance to cover your other different living expenses outside of school. For example, they give you a book allowance, uniform allowance, miscellaneous allowance, which I assume is like pocket money to spend on whatever you want, a living subsidy, a lodging allowance, and a transportation allowance for you to take public transportation to and from school. This scholarship is available to any incoming and current medical students who are in need of it. However, priority is given to students from certain demographics, such as those from geographically isolated areas, uh, members of indigenous groups, and children of government employees. The scholarship covers the tuition fees of uh, specific schools around the Philippines. For the National Capital Region, it's uh, BLM and the UP College of Medicine. For Region 1, it's University of Northern Philippines. For Region 2, it's Cagayan State University. For Region 3, it's Angeles University Foundation. For Region 4, they don't cover any university. For Region 5, it's Bicol Christian College of Medicine. For Region 6, it's Western Visaya State University. For Region 7, it's Southwestern University, FINMA, and the University of Cebu College of Medicine. For Region 8, it's the University of Philippines School of Health Sciences. For Region 9, it's the Mindanao State University. For Region 10, they don't cover any medical schools. For Region 11, there's Brokenshire College and the Davao Medical School Foundation. And then for Region 12, 13, CAR and Kraga and ARM, they do not cover any medical schools in that area. One thing to consider, however, when applying for this scholarship 
is that you have to provide return of service back to the Philippines after you've completed your medical education. And for this scholarship, it's two years of return service for every one year you were on the scholarship grant. Fulfilling the return of service agreement can be done through multiple ways, one of which is being a doctor to the barrios, which requires you to be a physician to certain um, regional areas of the Philippines for three years, regardless of how long your return of service is. There's working for the national level or local government level health administration management services programs. There's taking an accredited uh, residency program at any of the accredited hospitals within the Philippines. And there's working at the academic institution for health sciences or doing research and development for the health sciences. Another government scholarship that you can avail of is the CHED Financial Assistance. As opposed to the DOH scholarship, the CHED Financial Assistance only covers eight medical schools within the Philippines. And those are Bicol University, Cagayan State University, Mariano Marcos State University, Mindanao State University, the University of Northern Philippines, the University of the Philippines College of Medicine, the University of the Philippines Manila School of Health Sciences, and Western Visayas State University. The benefits of this scholarship are similar in that it covers 100% of your tuition for the school. However, you still have to pay some miscellaneous fees that are not included in tuition. Like the DOH scholarship, this can be availed of any incoming medical students or current medical students. But the nice thing about the CHED financial assistance is that the return service agreement is much more lenient in that you only have to provide one year of service for every year you were on the grant. For my viewers who are from Marikina, the Marikina city government passed the ordinance back in 2019. And what this ordinance states is that Medical students who are residents of their city get full coverage of their tuition and some allowance for living expenses. In exchange for this scholarship, recipients have to provide two years of medical service to the city of Marikina uh, from 8 to 5 daily after they graduate. The schools covered by the scholarship are Emilio Aguinaldo College, Far Eastern University, Fatima University, Manila Central University, PLM, St. Luke's College of Medicine, University of Perpetual Health System, DALTA, University of Santo Tomas, and University of the East. From private institutions, uh, the Unilab Corporation has its own scholarship program for medical students, but the benefits of the scholarship vary per school, so it's best to first contact the school to find out what scholarships you can avail of. The partner schools are Angeles University Foundation, Ateneo de Zamboanga University, Cagayan State University, Cebu Doctors University, Cebu Institute of Medicine, Davao Medical School Foundation, Pamantasa ng Lungsod ng Maynila or PLM, Siliman University, University of Perpetual Health, and Western Visayas State University. Another similar program is the Nelly Kellogg Van Schaik program, which partners organizations are the Davao Medical School Foundation and the Xavier University Dr. Sarazal School of Medicine in Mindanao. Like the Unilab Scholarship Program, it's best to contact these schools to find out what specific benefits you receive from the scholarship. For the school-based scholarships, I researched the different medical school scholarships available at the big universities in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. This list is by no means exhaustive, so I'll leave links in the description to some of the medical school schools that I found but didn't include in this list. For the Luzon NCR area, ASMPH offers two forms of scholarship, financial aid and merit-based. The merit-based scholarship is awarded to applicants who've scored at least 95th percentile in the NMAT and graduated with Latin honors, with 50% scholarship being granted to students who graduated Magna Cum Laude and 100% scholarship being given to students who graduated Summa Cum Laude. However, this is subject to change based on the admin, so it's best to contact the school first to find out the full details. ASMPH students can also avail scholarship grants for the financial aid application, which not only considers their academic performance, but also their financial needs and as well as their extracurricular activities. For the USD Faculty of Medicine and Surgery, they offer their students the Santo Tomas Scholarship, which provides a 50% discount for applicants who graduated Magna Cum Laude and 100% scholarship for applicants who graduated Summa Cum Laude from USD undergrad. Students who didn't take their undergrad in USD can also pay off this scholarship, but only in their second year. The requirements to maintain or achieve this scholarship after first year of med school is to maintain at least an 88.5% average with no failing grades. Another scholarship aspiring USD medical students can avail of is the Regent Scholarship Program, which is granted to five students every year. Recipients of this scholarship receive 100% free tuition, but also have to maintain a really high average grade of around 88%. In UERM, they offer two scholarships for first-year medical students, the University Entrance Scholarship, which is granted to students who graduated Magna Cum Laude or Summa Cum Laude from their bachelor's degree with at least a 95th percentile in the NMAT, 
and this gives them free tuition as well as lab fees and different miscellaneous fees as well as a 15,000 peso allowance that they can spend for books. Another scholarship that the first-year medical students can receive is the President de Lupin Entrance Scholarship which is given in either full or partial. The full is given to students who graduated at least cum laude and has at least a 90th percentile in the NMAT and this gives them free full tuition and lab fees for one year. The partial scholarship grant is given to students who also graduated with Latin honors from their undergraduate program and has an NMAT percentile rank of at least 85. In order to maintain the free tuition and lab fees for the succeeding school year, students have to maintain an average of at least 1.75, which is around an 88-90% to 90%, with no grade below a 2.5 or an incomplete. For a partial scholarship, which is 50%, uh, students have to maintain an average of at least 85 to 87 percent with no grade lower than 2.5 and no incompletes. In addition to these, students who are applicants for either partial or full scholarships have to be evaluated by the scholarship committee and have to be approved by the president before receiving the scholarship. For BLM, its students can also avail of in-house scholarships aside from the scholarships offered by the government. This includes being a full scholar which only requires you to pay around 8,000 to 15,000 per semester but Recipients of the scholarship must be a graduate of a public university in Manila and also a voter within Manila, meaning you need to have voted in a previous election within the city of Manila. The second category is partial scholar, which makes you only pay 25,000 to 30,000 per semester and requires you to have been a graduate from a public or private university within the city of Manila and also be a voter. The third category are students who have to pay full tuition because they are neither graduates of a university within Manila nor are they voters within the city of Manila. The fourth category is also a full scholar, meaning that they also receive the same benefits as those in category 1, but the requirement is that they must have graduated summa cum laude or magna cum laude from their respective undergraduate program. The fifth category is also a partial scholar like category 2, but they must have graduated at least cum laude from their respective undergraduate program. This is also coupled with the fairly difficult admission process of, the, of BLM where you're required to have at least 85th percentile on the NMAT as well as taking their own entrance exam and undergoing an interview. The De La Salle Medical and Health Sciences Institute is probably one of the most generous institutions in terms of giving scholarships and financial aid to its students in that it has over six different scholarship programs that it offers to its students. This includes the entrance scholarship which gives partial or full scholarship depending on the Latin honors you graduated with in medical school, the Special Entrance Scholarship, which gives partial or full scholarship depending on your performance in your respective board exam, which placing 3rd, 2nd, or 1st in your board exam, giving you 100% scholarship, placing 4th or 5th, giving you 75% scholarship, and with placing 6th through 10, receiving 50% scholarship. There's also the Dean Scholarship, where students who perform well in their undergrad and get high and math scores can receive 30% scholarship from the school, and the Academic Scholarship, which is given to students who maintain at least an average of 87 during their stay with no grade lower than 83%. In addition to these academic scholarships, the institute also offers financial aid programs similar to that of ASMPH where students only need to apply. I'll leave links in the description too though, so check it out if you're interested. For medical schools in Visayas, the Cebu Institute of Medicine offers four scholarships, an entrance scholarship for those who graduate at summa cum laude or magna cum laude from undergrad, a college scholarship which is given to students who achieve first or second honors during their stay in CIM, and interestingly, a special raffle scholarship which is given every year to one student who is a child of an alumnus of CIM, and what this scholarship gives is free four years of tuition for the student. In Cebu Doctors University College of Medicine, the school offers a full and partial scholarship for its students. For full scholarship, you just need to maintain a GWA for, from 1.1 to 1 with no grade lower than a 2. And partial scholarship requires you to maintain a grade from 1.35 to 1.2 with no grade also lower than a 2. In Southwestern University, they offer the Chairman Scholarship which covers tuition, lab fees, and different miscellaneous fees from the school, as well as giving a monthly allowance of 10,000 pesos and a 10,000 peso book allowance. The scholarship also covers the NMAT fees for any of its recipients as it targets graduates and seniors of any pre med program. The school also offers a presidential scholarship which gives 100% free tuition to any NMAT passer and graduate of a pre med program. Lastly, for schools in Mindanao, the Xavier University Dr. Jose Rizal School of Medicine also offers in-house scholarships on top of the ones offered by third parties. This includes the privately funded scholarships by Xavier University alumni, the La Vision Haveriana Scholarship, the Father Asandas Balchan and Friends Scholarship, and the Academic Scholarship which is given to the top two students after their first semester in medical school, and then given to the top two students after every succeeding year after. As our general advice for applying for scholarships and financial aid in medical school, 
One tip is to make sure you know what specific documents you have to prepare to submit to the school. And this is important because when you have to submit documents ranging from your grades to your parents' income tax report, it can be very time consuming and it's not necessarily something you can cram overnight. So it helps to start compiling these documents early. Another tip from my friends is that you should be honest about the amount that you're requesting from your school, especially when it comes to financial aid. With institutions only having a limited amount of funds to distribute to its students, it'll prioritize those who need it the most. So if your family only needs 25 or 50% in order to afford sending you to medical school, opt for those instead of choosing the 100% discount option. So guys, I hope you found the information in this video useful. Uh, like I said earlier, if there's any school that I didn't cover that you want to know about, I've left links in the description to my sources so that you can learn about them yourselves. If you have any questions about applying to med school, feel free to message me at chinoy underscore md on Twitter or on Instagram. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future content like this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.